Welcome to another episode of your Effective Living series, which is coming to you on City TV and City FM. This is our first week of the Living series, and this week is physical preparation for the year 2023. Today, our focus is on dieting. Yes, dieting. And we'll be trying to understand the dynamics of dieting. What is a diet? What do you need to know before you get into one? How important is dieting for your overall well-being? And are there any practical ways of actually doing a diet and monitoring diet? Privileged to have a clinical dietitian. She is both LD and RD. She will explain what that means. Miss Amma Pukwa Pukwifre, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I noticed there are some initials after your name. Yes. LD and RD. Is it left drive and right drive? <laughs> what, what does it mean? Okay, so after completing um, a Bachelor of Science in Dietetics, you usually would have to register yourself and license yourself. So RD is Registered Dietitian and LD is Licensed Dietitian. So you need to be registered and they need to be licensed. As well. So yes. I can't just go on there and start telling people what to eat. No. I see. <laughs> I see. So what is Dietetics? Okay, so it's just, it's a branch of nutrition. So it's like an, a further study about diet, nutrition, um, how it affects the well-being, health, etc. So it's like a more detailed version of nutrition where we explore diets and how you could apply like diets into wellness and everything. So if I go to a good hospital, yeah. I should be able to see a dietitian? Yes, you should be able to. I see. Is it because there are a lot of lifestyle diseases that require dieting as part of the treatment? Okay. So yes, I would say that, and I would say that these days, I mean, I practice in some hospitals, so the lifestyle diseases are on the rise among different age groups. So unlike previously where we used to have like, let's say you are 40, 50, so you have to start watching what you eat. These days we see diabetes, hypertension is like very young ages, 20, 25, 30, I mean, it's oh. very... 2025, yes. they are getting lifestyle disease already. <laughs> yes, already. So, wow. yes, I would say that these days, more Ghanaians have been open about taking nutrition and diet seriously. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when we talk of lifestyle diseases that have a dietary component, I guess diabetes will be the first, but it's not the only one. No, it's not the only one. Diabetes is most common. I mean, people usually know that better. Hypertension is also one. We have the chronic kidney diseases, okay. all these other things. They're also lifestyle diseases. Mm -hmm. So there are things that you live with. I mean, so you have to take drugs. You have to make adjustments to your diet. You have to also make adjustments to your exercise factor. So, yeah. Mm, interesting. So just find out, what's everything diet and nutrition? Is it the same thing? <laughs> so, no. Mm. So nutrition, it's a broader aspect of everything. Okay. Diet is like... Um, a subgroup that okay. specializes in particular things. So, okay. yes. so nutrition is broader? Yes, nutrition is because broader. Because nutrition, obviously, talk about nutrients. Nutrients. You can everything. get nutrients from different things. Yes. But diet is about eating. Yeah. Brilliant. All right. So when we say diet, sorry, is diet the same as dieting? <laughs> so a diet is um, a curated or is a specialized or standardized um, meal or meal pattern or type of or a way of eating to suit a purpose it could be weight gain it could be weight loss mm -hmm. it could be to supplement the fact that you have a lifestyle disease and you have to adjust the way you eat so dieting is like what explains what a diet is so dieting is when you say you are going on a diet or you are dieting it engulfs like trying to have um a special way of eating or a curated way of eating which involves moderation variety we have different components of dieting mm -hmm. so that's what we call dieting so it's just something that you know explains what what you mean by you're going on a diet i see yes. so the fact that i'm eating doesn't mean i'm dieting so if i get up and i eat skin and fish you know i'm saying this girl in second is going to say are they good diet it means i'm going to eat <laughs> but you're saying diet is curated yes so it's like even if you're going to eat kinky and fish, there are proportions, there are times, it's yes. like, it's like some, the science of eating. Okay. So the difference between eating and dieting, I would say, is that for eating, you don't have like a conscious effort. Mm -hmm. If I say I'm dieting, it means I'm making a conscious effort. Say, for example, I want to do a high protein diet. I'm making a conscious effort to make sure that the components of my food have a lot of 
protein or the percentage of my protein is higher on my plate as compared to my carbohydrates and fats and oil. But when it comes to eating, I mean, I pick my kinky fish. I'm not putting in a conscious effort. Or I'm not moderating or I'm not curating my food to suit a certain purpose. So you are just eating to satisfy your hunger pangs or something like that. Mm. Yeah. I, I noticed you've sort of started getting into the types of food groups. Maybe that's a good place to talk about this. Again, most people just eat. Yeah. Uh, but you're saying that in dieting, there are components of food. So just give me a broad sense. What, what, is it the colors of the food or is it the food groups? What are okay. some of the things you look at? So I think from basic um, science in SHS or I will say even JHS, we have the food groups. So we have macronutrients, micronutrients. Mm -hmm. So macro, the most common ones that we know, carbohydrates, mm -hmm. we have fats and oil, we have protein. Mm -hmm. So the micro, we have vitamins, minerals, water, all those things fall under. So when it comes to carbohydrates, when you, like, I mean, do nutrition into details, you realize that in the type of carbohydrate, we have simple carbohydrates, we have complex carbohydrates, we have fiber. So all these things are in our Ghanaian food setting. So when you take kinky, kinky is like a complex carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. When you take sugar, table sugar, you take honey, mm -hmm. it falls under the simple carbohydrate. So almost all the foods that we eat every day fall under these subgroups. Our vitamins and minerals can be found in vegetables, fruits, etc. So I think we all have a fair idea of what we are eating, but people do not, unless, of course, I always say this at work that unless someone has like a lifestyle disease diagnosis, nobody actually pays attention to what exactly they are putting in their stomach. So when they are having yam or they are having rice or anything, they do not care whether it has like, let's say, this percentage of fats or this percentage, they are just having it because they have to satisfy their hunger. So once you become more conscious about it, you realize that these parts or these micronutrients these have roles in the body. If you overeat them or you under eat them, there are consequences. So I think you need to help me a bit. So you said there are macronutrients and micro. Micronutrients. The macro are carbs, fats, and proteins. Yes. Then the micro are which ones? Vitamins, minerals, water. Vitamins, minerals. So, so micro means they are smaller. Um, I won't say smaller. I'd say that um, the role they play in the body, it's not as relatively, um, I won't say important, but the macronutrients are things that we need every single day in their right proportions. The micronutrients are things that are found in some of even the other macro um, nutrients in their own proportions. So it's like you have them. I mean, unless you go and do like a test or something, you realize that you are lacking in some of the macronutrients. Ideally, when you're having a lot of the micronutrients in the right proportions, you automatically would also satisfy, satisfy sorry, the um, intake for the micronutrients as well. So let's say you're having your servings of vegetables and fruits. You definitely have your um, micronutrients. So you have your potassium, your um, phosphorus, your ph everything will be in there. That's if only you are actually sticking to the right amount of the macronutrients. You know, when you said macronutrient, kinky came to mind. I said kinky is a <laughs> macro because kinky is for heavy people. So, so for example, so like, and be, like if you take kinky versus say plain rice, okay, are they the same? Okay. In this, your macro micro <laughs> issue. All right. So, when you take so. Um, we as dietitians we use something we call the um, healthy eating steps. Mm -hmm. So it's like a staircase and then it's like you can equate it to a pyramid. So it shows you what's built up the bulk of your food. So when you look at the first step, you see carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. So in there you see your rice, you see your maize, kinky, everything in there. So that's usually the um, complex carbohydrates. It forms bulk of our meals usually, especially in Ghana. So they are not entirely the same because what you find in kinky you don't find in rice but they all fall under the same group which is the macronutrients and the carbohydrates yes it means you need a whole lesson in nutrition <laughs> so we'll come back to this because i'm sure in prescribing some of your your diet you will go through this but let me just remind viewers and listeners that this is the effective living series this is this week one we call it physical preparation for 2023 a healthy mind lives in a healthy body and today's episode two, we're looking at the dynamics of dieting. And my guest is a licensed and registered dietitian, Ms. Ama Pukua Opukwe Friye. So now that we've given ourselves some intro, so what do you need to know before you get into a diet? Okay. 
Right. So I think this question is very important in practice because I see that there are things called fat diets. So fat mm. diets are simply um, diets that are promoted in lifestyle, fashion. Mm. And I mean, people give testimonies that, oh, it's worked for me, so I think you should try it. But it's not entirely um, advocated. Mm. So we have various fat diets. Ketogenic is one of the most common ones running in <laughs> the Ghanaian system currently. Ketogenic? We have yeah, ketogenic diets. We have intermittent fasting as well. So before anyone makes, just like I said, dieting is you are taking a conscious effort to try and curate your food or your eating patterns to suit a certain purpose. So before you decide to undertake a certain diet or whatever it is, it's very important to know a lot of things. So your health status mm -hmm. as an individual is very important. Mm -hmm. How are your blood pressures? How are your sugars? Um, how are your hemoglobin levels? How is your cholesterol looking like? How's your kidney working? How's your liver also working? You probably you are, you are seeing a lot of things. So hold on. <laughs> Blood pressures, your, your sugars, sugars your, your kidney. kidney functioning, your liver functioning, everything. But how do be. I know these things? So you simply, <laughs> you go, most of them need lab requests though. So you go to an appropriate health official. They would request for some of these labs. You go and you run them then you know where exactly you are at. These are because most of these labs have markers or they have things that would indicate whether you should do certain things or not. So you probably should know your health status very, very well before you decide to um, engage. So if you want to do, let's say, a diet very rich in um, potassium or greens. So we have a lot of potassium in our greens. Contomre, Alefu, all those greens have a lot of potassium, even our starchy tubers. So plantain, yam, all those things. However, if you go and you like, you know, check on your kidney functioning and you realize that, or your BUE cryptin, you realize that your potassiums are a bit out of, like, you know, sort or they are a bit high, you probably would want to put a hold to that because eating more of that will mean that your body will have to accumulate a lot more of the potassium. So people should not just like, you know, get up and, and back on a diet. So yeah. maybe I feel overweight. And my friends say, Charlie, there's some diet that Charlie, it'd be it's three months, you look jay. You're saying, before I go and do such a thing, I need to go and see a doctor to do blood pressure test, yes. kidney function test, liver function, blood sugar, cholesterol, and what else? Check literally everything you can. This is wow. not just because of that. Also, sometimes you want your diet, mm. you just want to handle weight loss, mm -hmm. but sometimes from things that we'll find out from the labs, you realize that maybe if we want to draw a, a standardized plan for you, we'd have to tweak some certain parts. Say I have a patient who um, wants to lose weight, but when to do, let's say a kidney function, we realize that potassium is very low. When I'm drawing a diet plan or I'm trying to curate a menu for the person, I'll chip in ways to make sure that I work on that so it comes up a bit or we just work around that. So that's just to like, you know, make your process very easy, very simple, and make your weight loss, weight gain, whatever you want to do, make it a very good process. Also, the whole idea of like, Ghanaians just looking at someone and say, oh, you've gained weight or something like that, is not right, because we have measures to weight gain. So it's something called a BMI. So for every individual, per your height, your height is supposed to hold a weight. So two people can't stand it like people usually do and say, oh, you're faster than this person. You cannot do that. So you have to check your BMI, know the range in which you are in. You set targets. So the whole idea of losing, say, 10 kg in one month is very unhealthy. So you set targets. Maybe I want to lose 2 kg every month. So once we've set all these things, we've made sure that there's no underlying condition, the person is not diabetic or hypertensive, whatever it is, then you can actually go through the dieting very well with no or like with a sound mind. Wow, this, this is interesting. So essentially no two diets are the same. That's what you're saying. There's no, every, no. Even if it's the same general name, because a diet is curated, it's bespoke yes. for your needs, yes. I see. And then you can set targets yes, for diet. Can. This is interesting. I just wanted to elaborate on something. You said there was ketogenic and intermittent. I know you don't <laughs> want to get into the fad, but for those who are listening, what, when they say keto, I mean, hear a lot of things like keto. I even thought it was karat. <laughs> it sounds like Japanese. So what is ketogenic? Okay, so ketogenic diet is a type of diet that involves a very low carbohydrate to no carbohydrate intake. 
So what people do is that they reduce the carb intake. Just like I mentioned earlier, carbohydrates make up the bulk of our meals, say 50 to 60%. But people take out, depending on the type of keto they are doing, they have classic, simple. So they take out completely or they reduce significantly, very little, almost as though they are not having it at all. And they increase their fat intake. So yes, rather. So ketogenic diets conventionally is used for seizures. It works for a lot of, um, we use it for epilepsy patients. It works very well. So that's what it's ideally used for. But people have, you know, tried to modify, or like fat, this celebrity did it, it works, so they are doing it. It has quite adverse amounts of, like, you know, effects. So, I mean, sometimes because of the high amounts of fat, people tend up getting a lot of cholesterol issues. People have a lot of like some some people even from the cholesterol can also start having blood pressure issues as well. So it has more adverse effects. Than so in the keto, they stop the carbs yes. and they do maybe fruits, vegetables, and then no, fats. even fruits and vegetables are also carbohydrates. So they don't. So, so they just do fat and protein. Fat and protein. So they modify their diet. Nice. So you hear them having cabbage fufu or cabbage panku. <laughs> They use psyllium husk, they modify and then wow. have like a lot of oily stew or something. It works, I must admit. So I've seen that it works for some people, but the pros and the cons... So it must be prescribed to solve a particular problem. A particular, which is epilepsy or seizures, usually. That's what we use it for clinically, but we do not use it for weight loss. This is because it's not um, maintainable. Most of the people that I know who come back and decide to go on like appropriate diet after failed ketos will always tell you that it is not maintainable. If you, if you lose 20 kg in two months or two weeks, you would gain it all back if you don't wean yourself off properly. And by the time you gain it back, you'd probably carry cholesterol issues and hypertension along with it. So I think the cons are just So way keto too much. is not to be entered lightly. No. It must be based on proper advice. Yes. What is intermittent fasting? So intermittent fasting, <clears throat> briefly, it's like, say, I eat today. I eat, let's say, at 6 a.m. today. There are different types. People do it in different ways. And then, let's say, after I eat at 6 a.m., I fast till the next morning. Sometimes I eat a full day. Then the next day, I decide to fast the whole day. Then, so people do, people do it 24 hours, 12 hours, 48 hours intervals. So the whole idea is to restrict calorie intake. But ideally, weight loss involves calorie restriction and an increase of physical activity, but it has to be done the right way so you can maintain it. Because maintenance is the most important thing. So what's the point of, let's say, losing 10 kg and gaining it all back in a month if you don't maintain it properly? But maybe say you lost 5 kg in the appropriate way, mm -hmm. you probably would be able to keep that and lose some more if you do the right thing. Wow. So. This intermittent fasting is a calorie issue. For so fasting, essentially, is to manage your calories, yes. right? You didn't explain what a calorie is. Today. <laughs> What's calorie? Look, a calorie is like the I always say this to um, battery is what so food is calorie. So calorie is the energy um, wow. unit of food. I like that. Yes. So battery is to watts as food is to calorie. Calorie. So the more food you, the more calories you get. Yes. So are calories good or bad for you? Calories are good. Everyone needs certain amounts of calories. If I use, um, there's this, it's called a body analyzer, body fat analyzer or bipedal something. So when you scan the whole body, it tells you what's ideally for your age, your weight, your height, what you should be eating per day. So let's say I scan and I get 1,600 kilocalories. As a dietitian, I should be able to break the 1,600 kilocalories into foods, so Ghanaian foods. So we have a template that shows us that, say, banku gives us 200 kilocalories. So in a day, maybe you should eat this amount of banku, you should eat that amount of rice. So at, at, at the end of the whole day, you have 1,600 kilocalories. So calories are good. Every individual has the amount of calories that they should have every day. Yes. Wow. This is the Effective Living Series. We're talking physical preparation for 2023. This is our first week. My name is Bernard Avalet. My guest is a licensed and a registered dietitian. She's called Amma Pokua Opokwe Free. And she's talking to us about dieting with all these dynamics. Really interesting stuff indeed. Um, I just wanted to come back to something. Um, 
all of this discussion appears to suggest that dieting is for weight loss. Okay. But those of us who, <laughs> Charlie, we, we need something small to, you know. Okay. Is, can, you, can, you, can you diet for weight gain? Yes, you can. So, um, dieting most often than not, I mean, when you introduce yourself as a dietitian, first thing person will say will be, oh, I want to lose weight. Oh. So, it's, I think it's a stereotype which is not entirely true. So you diet for certain reasons, including weight loss. You can diet for weight gain. You can diet to make sure that your glycemic index, I'll explain that. So the glycemic index of your like food or your meals are low. You can do a low fat diet. You can do a high calorie, high protein diet. Mm -hmm. You can do um, a low phosphate diet. Like there are different kind of diets, DASH diets, Mediterranean diets. So many diets that you can undertake for various reasons, partly lifestyle, partly choice as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. I see. So, in dieting for weight gain, what are some of the things to consider? Okay, so for weight gain, I would always let like people check some of these things I mentioned earlier. So the cholesterol, your, how your blood pressures are doing, your sugars. Because one thing, very funny thing, is that people who seem to be underweight or look very lean or slim have most often than not have a lot of cholesterol i don't know i can't i i probably would have I, to take I, a I, research i refuse it <laughs> i probably would have to do a research slim people have a lot of cholesterol <laughs> surprisingly generally. Generally. Where, where cholesterol is what so lipids so ldl hdl it's like their lab markers so when you go to the laboratory we can interpret them so you do it then we check how your High density lipoproteins are what, looking at stuff like that. Um, it has the power to induce, if it doesn't do that directly, it has the power to induce so many things that can kill you. So the fact that somebody is slim or underweight does not mean they should just eat. Yes. It could mean that they, that's just how their body is. Yes. They could be like uh, very, um, some people say it's like you process food quickly. Yes. I mean, determinants of body weight aside food will also be genetics. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have a very slender mother or mm -hmm. you have a slender, I mean, it would obviously reflect. If you have like a big bone mother like I do, obviously it would reflect. So mm -hmm. genetics plays a role. However, calorie restriction and calorie monitoring also plays a role in then weight gain and everything. So sometimes, say, you think you're underweight and you want to gain weight, and then I check your labs, and then I realize that uh, your cholesterol is a bit deranged. I have a way of still curating a diet for you to gain weight without necessarily adding up to your cholesterol, but rather even work on your cholesterol so you don't get a risk of many of these diseases. So this is a whole professional area. Yes. <laughs> I see. You don't do, you just go and buy food and be eating, <laughs> eating papaya and things, thinking that you gain weight. All right, uh, I know a lot of people do teas. Um, I won't mention his name, but a friend of mine, he will buy bitter cocoa. Okay. Fred, you know him. Jimmy, every, those times, he would, Charlie, the, cocoa, the, the thing is bitter, he's drinking it. He said it was helping him. Just talk to me, general about beverages that people take in a bit to lose weight. What do you need to know? What do you need to consider? Okay, so... Ideally, what most of these beverages do is that they fill up space. So you do not overeat your calories. So sometimes even in a bit to like work on calorie like intake, you can tell the person to have like a beverage or water before meals. Cause like, I mean, the, t the stomach is like a container. So if you fill it up just a bit, it would limit the amount of actual food that the person can have. So yes, some of them and other of other other times, some of these beverages have some components that help with, um, let's say, headaches or say you want to, for certain purposes, so the cocoa drinks, some of these teas, they have like specific, I know green tea has like some components that helps with like, you know, metabolism, etc. So most of them have specific things that they work with, yeah. So it all depends on what you need yes. to do. Yeah. But some just fill up space. Yes. What about dietary supplements? Okay. Um, I've seen people talk about them a lot. What are your general thoughts about them? Okay. So I'm not against dietary supplements, but I, I for one, I always suggest that you only supplement if you know that you're missing out on something. If you're not entirely, because I, I find that Ghanaians like, oh, they've seen this, so they are buying it. What if you don't need it? Mm -hmm. So say you've taken dairy out of your... Um, mm -hmm. your food because mm -hmm. of lactose intolerance or something. Mm -hmm. Say milk is out and stuff like that. 
um, I'd always recommend that sometimes, especially when they're old, they are sorry, old or they're elderly, they mm. would do calcium supplements. That's fine. If you, let's say, of course, pregnant women, you want to do folate, you want to do this kind of, or you've checked um, hemoglobin levels are low, mm. blood levels are low, you want to do vitamin C. Because mm. vitamin C and iron combines in the blood to form him. So that's fine. So for specific reasons, yes, I am not against dietary supplements. But I find it that these days it's very worrying that on social media there are so many unorthodox um, supplements selling. People are actually, like, you know, falling for them and it's, it's very problematic. Mm. So I'd only say that you supplement when you need and you supplement after you've spoken to a mm. health provider and mm. they've assured you that this is fine for you or they've even one an extra step of like suggesting that I think you should go for this, that's fine. Is there an age, and this is my final question, is there an age profile for dieting? You've spoken about all the tests you need to do. Are there any considerations you need to make the older you get, for yes. example? Yes, so um, for younger, way younger um, kids, most of them have higher allowances of fat as compared to older people. So age is very important when you are going on a diet or you want to go on a diet. So you, you consider the person's age, and for age, even for labs, I mean, if you are going to do a lab, they use your age. The markets are different for each age. So mm -hmm. if you want to draw a plan for someone who's 12 years, who's 16, even if mm -hmm. it's the same condition, it will vary because the mm -hmm. nutrients and the distributions of the nutrients will vary across both ages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If somebody wants more information about all of this, how do they get in touch with you? Okay, so um, I can leave my number on so we put on the screen yes so you can just con and please just for dietary stuff as just for well. dietary yes not for advice <laughs> not for relationship advice no <laughs> not for economic <laughs> advice thank you for talking to us yeah okay we're speaking to a licensed and a registered dietitian i learned that first today so there are two same person licensed registered dietitian miss amma pokua opokwe free who's been explaining to us the basics and the dynamics of dieting we learnt a few things today. You need to check before you go on these diets. And you can also diet to gain weight. So there's hope for me, <laughs> definitely. Thank you for watching. This is week one of the Effective Living Series. We're talking about physical preparation for the year. We'll continue with another exciting topic tomorrow. Stay with us.